Hello my soccer universe. I hope this time the microphone is not using the noise cancelling mode. It has it. I just don't know. I, I can turn it off, but there's no sign that it says it is turned off. So I hope this time the sound is much better than yesterday's review video. Yeah, still getting used to it. So uh, I hope it will work, but I hope that the sound overall will steadily improve, especially when I go back a little bit more. Nations League, we have a winner. It is the French and I'm wearing the long sleeve French jersey, which, yeah, uh, two reasons. A, yeah, they played in white again, which was a little bit uh, bitter for me uh, because I really like Spain. Uh, they, in the run-up, they showed the highlights of the Euro 1984 final where both play in their first team jerseys, Spain in their classic look with light blue pants and black uh, socks. And then we have, yeah, okay, Spain, there's a little bit of color, and then France in all white. Yeah, I guess it's all right. I would have loved to see France in blue in their, classi uh, in their classic tricolor look. It's just something that, uh, it's one of the best looks out there. And I don't know why we have to compromise it, because no one is compromising with Brazil, for instance. Uh, so I'm wearing this one because of white. Also, short sleeves, it is freaking cold. It is mid of October and the windows on the car are already frozen. So yeah, uh, kind of keeping it a little bit warm. Let's talk about the Nations League Final Four. First off, uh, before we go into the to the games, it was goal field. We had a total of 14 goals, which means three and a half per game. That's pretty spectacular. And I actually think that the Nations League, in a way with this Final Four, has taken the next step up. I remember the last Final Four was kind of so and so. Yeah, there was an exciting Netherlands-England game in there, but the final was a dud. The third place playoff uh, bored everyone to tears and even the Portugal-Switzerland semi-final, while it featured a Ronaldo free kick, was not all that great. Um, this time I have to say that we got at least two bangers in the semi-finals and I think even the final delivered and even the third place playoff. There was something riding on it because the home team was also in there. Also, you had, unlike last time, you really had probably Europe's four best nations in there. So it's a best on best and that always will deliver. So I think, and you could see the in the games, maybe not in the aftermath of the, of the games, but during, during games, people cared about it. The players cared about it. Everyone wanted to uh, lift this tournament. And I think this uh, was my big takeaway that I think we finally are at the point where at least the Nations League, the winners, they care about it. Yes, after the final, uh, when I saw Luis Enrique's uh, congratulations to Didier Deschamps. Yeah, you could see, yeah, we had a great game, but he was not so dejected. It was kind of a very cordial thing, but you know, we will get there eventually. I maintain that the Nations League, not within the next 10 years, but I think a change will occur where we will see uh, that this is the superior tournament. Not yet. The Euros are great, but you know, if we get a World Cup, if we really would get a World Cup every two years, how do you find a European champion? Yeah, ta-ta, Nations League, for instance. So yeah, very quickly games. I mean, Italy, Belgium, uh, we don't need to talk much about it. Italy was largely the more productive team in a way. Uh, Barella gives them right after the halftime uh, with a great, great goal, the lead. Then Berardi with a penalty that Courtois almost saved. Just his step sequence probably was a little bit off. Almost saved it, uh, makes it 2-0. And then, uh, while well, it, it seems that Italy is seeing it out, Belgium pulls from back to through the Cattellari, who puts it through the legs of Donnarumma after a nice uh, De Bruyne pass. And I had to smile at that one. Not big, you know, I think I'm tr I am try to make peace with the whole Donnarumma thing, although I'm still, you know, there's still a sour feeling uh, for me. However, I was thinking the Cattellari is a player that Milan highly covets and now um, he is embarrassing Donnarumma. I think a lot of Milan fans were really happy about it. I'm not sure if the Cattellari will go to, go to Milan. I actually would love it, but hey, let's see. The final. Uh, this was a highly interesting game in many ways. I mean, for 60 minutes, there were hardly any uh, goal, was hardly any goal mouth action. 
However, it was totally a game on the knife's edge. You could see that it is teetering and if there's one mistake, this thing might break open. Spain, loads of possessions, trying to lure out France. Please come my way. But France didn't give in. Uh, France was not going forward in numbers. Whenever they had the ball, they were only Benzema and Mbappé uh, up, up there, Griezmann, largely anonymous through the entire game, in my opinion. But it was, uh, France was very, very cautious in their approach because they knew with that quick passing, uh, Spain can hurt us big. And it was actually also kind of interesting. I mean, yes, I think it was the most interesting game that I have seen where there were hardly any goal uh, mouth scenes. Because Spain's passing, how they always moved around and tried to play themselves out, it was not uh, possession for possession six. They, they really tried in many, many ways, uh, but France didn't give in. So I, I think the only real scene was when Benzema once broke through, maybe in an offside position, maybe, maybe not, we'll talk about the title, of course, later, um, very early on, but that was that, Spain had a few corner kicks, but the goalkeepers didn't really have anything to do. Second half, almost a similar picture, but there was like a scene in the 55th where again on the both sides you you could see how this game can explode it was just uh passing that was off i think there was one where uh, an, an attack by spain where uh, oyasabal uh did not move the ball right and then one by france where uh i think it was pava who could not get it in and, you know the passes were a little bit short it was not very well done um but then uh, i think in the 65th 10 10 times later the game exploded uh, first, it was a um, chance by Theo Hernandez in his home stadium who pulled it on the bar, didn't, didn't, didn't go in. Then just a few seconds later, Oyar Sabal broke through. I thought at first he, he touched it with his hand, but seemingly VAR looked at it and did not. And with a nice shot, uh, it was a Busquets uh, assist, with a nice shot, he actually uh, they pulled it into the net. And at that point, one was tempted to say, um, yeah. Spain might actually see this out. However, they did not counter France, and we saw it in the chance that Theo Nandes had. Once France put numbers forward, they were deadly, and they can kind of, kind of overwhelmed Spain. With seven passes off the kickoff, the ball comes from Papé to Benzema, who takes a wonderful shot from the edge of the, of the corner, and this guy is not letting up. I think he's getting better with age at the moment, uh, and gets a wonderful equalizer in the 66th. And while I was afraid that we will see now stalemate, I actually was hoping and thinking, nah, this game has now broken open and it really, really, really did. And at that point when France made the 1-1, actually France, I thought, had also control of the game. Spain could not get their fine passing to get to together and suddenly uh, France was more physically going forward. Um, and they got the fruit of the labor with a Hernandez pass to Mbappé. Obviously offside. Obviously offside. However, a quirk in the rules allowed him to stay onside because, um, I forgot his name, uh, I think it was Eric Garcia, kind of tried to intercept the ball and touched it slightly. And that would Mbappé offside, uh, onside. And I'm thinking, is this, does this make sense? Because I mean, uh, at least when I grew up, the, it thought when the pass is played and the intent, and at least the intended target, which was clearly Mbappé and not Eric Garcia, uh, he has an advantage. That he's touched and later, I think this is a freak thing. I mean, uh, the defender has no idea there or whatsoever. So I thought this was, it was a pretty harsh decision. I mean, on one side, I was happy because, uh, yeah, I a, no, two sides, I was happy. A, I was slightly more for France in this, in, in this game, although I would have been all right with Spain winning it, but, you know, uh, a little bit more for France. Uh, I personally have better relations with France than, 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 than with Spain, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, but the other one was, yeah, overtime was avoided because it was getting, getting late and, uh, yeah, uh, it's a pretty big day today. Uh, my, my, my Mondays are very busy for me. So yeah, so uh, from that point, but I was thinking from Spain's perspective, or even for me, I mean, I did not really un understand it because, you know, this is a rule, I guess, I guess you really need to know your rules very, very well. Um, many experts 
kind of didn't see it. And they didn't even really show it again. In the one replay, you see uh, you see him clearly offside. I didn't see it until after the game where you saw, okay, there was a touch by Eric Garcia. That was it. The way Mbappeto converts it, world class, absolutely world class. And yeah, he gets a, a, a winner. Finally, he shows up in a big game. Although at this moment, as I said, the Nations League uh, is getting uh, better. People want to win it. How big of a game it this is! I want to see him do this in a Champions League final, for instance. However, if you thought now the game is done, I mean, there was always the chance that uh, France will make a third, but Spain then really in desperation threw everything forward and uh, two big saves needed to be made by Yoris. Um, even Une Simon almost got in on the action uh, late for, in a series of, car of core corner kicks. The stoppage time was two minutes longer than expected, but I guess there was a change in there and so on. Um, and so, yeah, the game ends with France winning it all, <laughs> one is to say and kind of redeeming themselves for a rather um, how, 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 how say, poor Euro showing. I think it was, a, it was a very interesting game and it then got a really great game once the goals were scored. Um, but it, as I said, the first half, I found this highly, highly interesting and enthralling uh, despite there not being any shots from goals whatsoever. But uh, it was really... You could see if there is one little mistake, boom, doors will break open, and that's exactly what happened. It would have been great if maybe Bonsama scores very early on, but I really think that he thought it was a side. So, that's everything I wanted to say about the Nations League. Um, again, I hope the sound is good. Now my laptop fan is also acting up again here. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And yeah, World Cup qualifying is back with us. Up until then, bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!